Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, um, all I want <laughs> to say, Mr. Speaker, is to thank members for their various, their various contributions, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, the beauty of St. Lucia is legendary. Um, just listen to what Chip Advisor says about St. Lucia. Castries Market, one of the top markets in the world, St. Lucia Forum, according to National Geographic, Castries Market is the number three food market in the world. St. Lucia, second highest lighthouse in the world. Review of Cap Mulashik, St. Lucia Caribbean, Trip Advisor. Castries Basilica or the Market Conception. The Form Cathedral, as it is commonly known, is the largest church in the Caribbean, measuring 200 feet, 61 meters by 100 feet wide, 30 meters. Mr. Speaker, that is what St. Lucia is all about, Mr. Speaker. And that is what the nature, the, I said Nature Heritage Tourism Program, that was the, the beginning, that was the name in the beginning, Mr. Speaker. And we must pay tribute to Felix Finis there in that regard. Mr. Speaker, that's what community tourism is all about. Reviving these things, making money from these things, but most importantly, allowing them to be sustainable, Mr. Speaker for our visitors to enjoy, and, but they remain for the people, to the people, property of the people of, of this country, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, when we embarked on that journey of a philosophical underpinning to tourism, we were ridiculed, as usual. You're ridiculed, Mr. Speaker. You told me you didn't know what you were doing. Look at where it is rich, Mr. Speaker. Look at where it is rich now. Look at where it is rich now. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank all the players in the tourism industry. And I want more, more particularly, I want to thank the people who have bought into that vision of a tourism that will benefit as many people as possible, Mr. Speaker. And I want to say, Mr. Speaker, that the only way we will earn the benefits and the economic gains of tourism is if everybody benefits from it. That's the only way, Mr. Speaker. No other way. And Mr. Speaker, for those of us who want to be selfish and criticize things like the Jazz Festival, Mr. Speaker, because it doesn't seem directly to be doing what they think tourism promotion should be, Mr. Speaker. Tell them, check, Mr. Speaker that once the people are happy, once the people are getting a piece of the pie, the country will be a different place, Mr. Speaker. So I want to commend the Minister for Tourism. I want to commend the colleagues, my colleagues, Mr. Speaker. You see, Mr. Speaker, last, on Monday night, yesterday we left cabinet at Call to train to 25 minutes to 10. Mr. Speaker, what we were doing there was not to discuss who to victimize, was not to discuss who to block from a contract, was not to discuss how you can make somebody's life miserable or you can call somebody's child not to get an island scholarship. That's not what we were discussing, Mr. Speaker. We are discussing how to advance St. Lucia. We are discussing how to make this place better, Mr. Speaker, for the people of St. Lucia. And I was not here, but when I heard that we were accused of none of us being able to run a business, that, 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 that's the scorn and the contempt in the, the insult. That was the, that's the scorn and contempt that the leader of the opposition holds for the products of St. Lucia. Ah, that's, that's the contemporary, Mr. Speaker. Look, look around you. Look around, Mr. Speaker. Look at each individual, each man and woman here. Look at them in their own rights, Mr. Speaker. And you say because they never run a business, they not fit. They have no plans, Mr. Speaker. 
at the contribution for the member from Miku South, for Viewfort South, Mr. Speaker. Look at, look at each one of these men and women here, Mr. Speaker. But because they do not have titles to their names, because their father could not leave wealth and money for them, Mr. Speaker, you must insult them. You must say that they have no plans because they have never run a business, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we will not be deterred. We will not be deterred. We will remain focused, Mr. Speaker. This country is for everyone. Everyone, Mr. Speaker. But the people must not be left behind. And that, and that bill, together with the borrowing that we did for the young people through the skills OECS program, for the, for the money that we, we, we borrowed to deal with the land administration processes, the money we deal we, we borrowed to see if we can enhance and make easier the collection of revenue to run the state, Mr. Speaker. All these bills show a government with a plan, a government with a vision. Not a government that talks about seven hotels and never builds one. Not a government that talks about 23 islands and never and not understanding that, that that's not possible. Not a government that speaks about $1.2 billion worth of U.S. In, of investment in this country. And not one, according to the member of the library, not one cage. <laughs> not one power college pool. And I want to say, and when the time of reckoning comes, when the time of reckoning comes, it's coming soon in 2026. <clears throat> when the time of reckoning comes, Mr. Speaker, I want us to put up our hands and look at what we've done in this country. Look at our five years and look at their five years. Raise your hands up. Raise. A, a balance sheet. Put up your hand for your five years and put up our hand for our five years. And look at what we have done in our five years, Mr. Speaker. And look at what they did in their five years. In the next six years. And it's not because they didn't have plans. Of course they had plans, Mr. Speaker. Of course they had plans. But, <laughs> of course they had plans, Mr. Speaker. Look at what we did. Look at this country where it was two and a half years ago. Look at it where it is now, Mr. Speaker. And look at where it's heading. But, Mr. Speaker, as a member for Viewford North says, there are some things that are happening that are not solution. We're not a violent people. We're not a violent people, Mr. Speaker. And we have to deal with it. And instead of the opposition trying, Mr. Speaker, I want to make a point. Somebody told me yesterday that somebody in the opposition said they had contacted me to work together, to, first of all, to work together to work on crime intervention, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in recent times, at least for this year, I have not been contacted by any member in any opposition party to speak anything about crime. And I want them to show the proof where I was contacted either by telephone, WhatsApp, fax, email, telex, if, if they still have it, snapshot, TikTok, <coughs> to talk anything about crime, Mr. Speaker. That has never happened. Never happened, Mr. Speaker. And I remain open to people, to anybody who comes with clean hands to discuss the issues of violence in this country. I remain open, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I want, I want members to support this bill, Mr. Speaker, and I hope that the benefits of tourism can continue to accrue to the people of the country and the Ministry of Tourism and the Minister of Tourism, Mr. Speaker, can continue in the path that they are going so that St. Lucia can reap the benefits of the industry. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.